Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Sister Sandra Xiao, and I am from the Vervan Day Missionaries. And this is our second session of Podcast Advent Retreat. In this time of prayer, let us be open to Jesus and allow Him to encounter us, to love us. He came 2,000 years ago, no, on that first Christmas at Bethlehem. He continues to come to us because He's a God who is not far away from us, but He's a God who is near us. In the last session, we lighted up the candle of hope. In this session, we focus on the second Advent candle, peace. What is peace? What does the word peace mean to you? It is a word we use often, but we do not ponder what it truly means. Many people will say that peace is the absence of war and violence. Peace is the absence of loud noise. Peace is the absence of problems and chaos. In John 14, Jesus told his disciples, Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. What peace is Jesus referring is it the absence of war, loud noise, problems? Peace is not an absence, but the presence of God in the midst of daily life with all its ups and downs. This is the peace that Jesus offers, his own peace, his own presence of peace. In Hebrew, the word for peace is shalom, which means completeness, wholeness. This sense of completeness, wholeness comes from the security, the inner conviction of knowing, believing that God is with us, God is in us. Jesus gives us his shalom, his peace, which is not the same peace given by the world. The world's concept of peace depends on external circumstances. The world offers us temporarily peace. It tells us many times, no, if you're having stress at work or problems at home, then take a vacation, go for a spa break, no? escape, run away, no? go, go somewhere else no? where there's calmness and stillness. However, that peace vanishes when we return home, when we go back to the office, and then the stress and the chaos reign again. Jesus' peace is permanent and stable. His peace remains even in the midst of troubles. He said in the passage, Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid are four words that we find many times in the scripture. During the Advent season and Christmas, we hear these four words spoken to Mary in, in the Annunciation, Zachariah in the temple, Joseph in his dream, the shepherds out in the field, this is the constant message from God to his people, to us. This is our reassurance. God does not want us to live our lives from a place of fear, but from a place of trusting peace that he is with us. In this Advent, we can ask ourselves, in what areas of my life now, do I need the peace of Jesus? Perhaps some of us need peace in a relationship or in a family 
or peace with ourselves. Perhaps we feel that our lives are out of control and we are anxious about the future. In this time of prayer, we can ask, we can ask Jesus, Lord, help me. Tell Jesus, Lord, I need you. I need your peace. The peace of Jesus is the fruit of being in relationship with him. Advent is a good time to build our relationship with Jesus by setting time to pray and place him again at the center of our lives. In prayer, Jesus comes to encounter us and takes the initiative to be with us. We need to respond. In Revelation 3, Jesus said, Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If any hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to the house and eat with them and they will eat with me. I would like to speak a little on the context of Revelation 3. It was written to the people, to the church of Laodicea. If you read the verses before this verse that I just mentioned, verse 20, you would see that the people were described as lukewarm in their faith. And they proudly said, no, I am rich, no, I have acquired wealth and I do not need a thing. They were full of themselves and had no place for God. In the eyes of Jesus, these people were pitiful, poor, blind. But Jesus did not give up on them. Verse 20 in Revelation 3 shows him knocking, urging the people to let him in. Today, Jesus is standing at the door of our hearts and knocking. He wants to enter into our lives, into our hearts. Now, we are free to keep the door locked and leave Jesus standing outside. We are also free to open the door and let him into our lives. Jesus never forces his way in. Instead, he waits. He waits for our response. This passage of Revelation 3 always reminds me of the Christmas story where Mary and Joseph experienced doors being shut to their faces as they went from in to in looking for a place to welcome the birth of God. But there was no room for them to stay as St. Luke wrote in Luke 2, verse 7. Do we have room in our hearts for Jesus to stay? Are we like the people of Laodicea, with hearts full of ourselves, with our material riches and securities, that we have no room for Jesus to come in? Jesus wants to enter into our lives, not as a guest, but as a permanent resident and constant companion. When we open the door and welcome Jesus, according to Revelation 3, the passage, he promises to enter to eat with us. In the Bible, eating a meal is one of the fundamental ways friendships are established, deepened, and enjoyed. Today, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is standing at the doors of our hearts and he is knocking, waiting to enter 
and bring us into a deeper, personal, loving relationship with Him. He wants to share a meal of friendship with us. Will we open and welcome Him? Or will we close the doors of our hearts? When we have Jesus, we have peace, which spill over to the people around us. Isn't it amazing if we walk into a place and the atmosphere changes to become more peaceful? Instead of we entering a room and people just tense up with nervousness no, and anxiety. The impact of having Christ's peace is that we are filled with peace and peace pours out of us. Our presence, our words, our actions transmit peace. Thus, this vertical dimension of peace between God and us leads us to the horizontal dimension of peace between us and others. Ephesians 2 is a beautiful passage that speaks of this horizontal dimension of peace that comes from the vertical dimension. St. Paul speaks of the reconciliation of Jews and Gentiles in Christ. He points out, For Christ is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. Now, St. Paul states very clearly that the consequence of having God's peace is oneness. Peace removes the dividing wall of hostility and hatred between the Jews and the Gentiles, between us and others. Are we ready to have Christ as our peace? This is because having Christ as our peace requires us to make peace with one another and urges us to open ourselves to others, even to take the step to suspend judgment, put ourselves in the place of the other and understand their point of view. To have Christ as our peace compels us to listen to each other and to accept that the other is not a threat. To have Christ as our peace is to work for reconciliation. Am I in conflict with someone? Is there someone with whom I need to tear down the wall of division and build oneness. In the time of silent prayer, let us take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to show us concrete people with whom we need to make peace. On Christmas night, when Jesus was born, an angel appeared to the shepherds. And the message was, in Luke 2, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace. On earth, peace. Now, earth here does not refer to the world in abstract, but to humanity, to each one of us. God's promise of peace begins with each one of us. There's a Christmas song entitled, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And the song starts with these lines, Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Where does peace begin? Does peace begin when a family member responds to us with kindness? 
Does peace begin when colleagues who are more welcoming towards us? Does peace begin when friends are less judgmental? Peace begins with each one of us. No matter how insignificant or unimportant we might feel, we have the purpose here and now to become bearers of peace, instruments of peace, to build bridges, to heal relationships. It is important to recognize that we need to exercise peace by choosing peace. Despite the fact that words had been said, deeds had been done, events had happened, we choose peace. We choose to act with peace, to speak with peace. We can choose peace when we have Jesus as our peace. As Pope Francis said in May this year, he said, For no one can leave peace if they do not have it within themselves. No one can give peace unless that person is at peace peace. And he added, let us learn to say every day, Lord, give me your peace. Give me your Holy Spirit. May this be our prayer each day, especially in this Advent. Lord, please, please give me your peace. Give me your Holy Spirit the giver of your peace. As we prepare to celebrate Christmas, may we long for peace and act on this desire by opening the doors of our hearts to Jesus. Only when we are filled with his presence can we become channels of his peace to our homes, workplaces, faith communities, parish, and friendships. <laughs>